Oh my god, that's a good one. Oh my god, that's a that's a mondo. Oh my god, it's huge. It's freaking huge, guys. It is freaking huge. Oh, it's huge. Oh my gosh. This thing is absolutely massive. What is up, folks? Welcome back to another video. Why is it not focused on my face? Come on, camera. You know these expensive cameras, they're great and all. They make the shot look good. But sometimes they just like they won't even focus on your face. They're like trying to focus on that that towel that's been hanging on my fence for two days. Like, come on, camera. Yeah, we're actually getting prepared for a fishing trip tomorrow morning. So right now is kind of the process where I go through all my tackle and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Who's that? <laughs> Oh, I got you now. What are you doing over there? I heard you talking to yourself, so I had to investigate. You're trying to sneak up on me? Mm -hmm. What are you doing back there? Cleaning. Oh my goodness! Are you plotting on me back there? What are you cleaning outside with Lysol wipes? At the little bench out here. Let me see. No, what are you doing back there? What have you, what have you done with Charlie? Charlie's a victim. Look at him. He's, he's my uh, accomplice. Ah, okay. Well, what was I saying since you were listening to me? Because now I've lost track. Talking about your camera. Oh, but I was prepping for tomorrow. I think that's what I'm talking ah. about. As you can tell, there's a lot of things going on around the house on a nice little Sunday like today, which means tomorrow's Monday and we're going fishing. Yeah, I think I was saying something about preparing for a fishing day. I actually just got done from the gym, trying to get the old gym body back, you know, trying to get rid of the old fat dad body, move into like a more of a fat jacked type body. Used to have one of those, but that's a whole nother story. Anyways, we've gone off on a complete tangent now. So yeah, we're getting ready to fish a pond tomorrow. Pretty good sized pond. A pond that I think I've only fished once or tw twice. This will be my third time fishing this particular pond. Now the thing about this pond is I've only caught dinks out there so far, okay? I mean, that's, that's I'll be honest with you, that's all I've really caught, like one pounders and below, like not even any threes or anything like that, but, I was told by the owner of the pond, in fact, I was guaranteed that there were big fish out there. So, you know, people tend to say that, and then you go out there and you're just like, I don't know. But I actually think that it's true because this particular pond has features that I know hold big fish. It has deep water, has deep structure, and it's big enough, and the bait population is big enough, and it's old enough to have big bass. So I tend to believe these folks. So I'm actually uh, kind of trying to figure out what I'm going to throw, how I'm going to try to catch one of these big ones. But one thing I can tell you, we're going to get out there early, and we're going to throw some top water because in my experience, top water, especially, what am I about to say, a buzz bait, the Guggen Squad Hummer, my favorite lure of all time, that tends to be that lure that just catches big bass. I don't know what it is, but... I feel like I've caught the most big bass out of any like one lure that I've thrown, you know, for a long time. The buzzbait is a lure that has caught me the most big bass on average. So definitely gonna have to find some in the old fishing man cave for sure. But before we go any further, folks, I want to give a big shout out to the video sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. For those of you who don't know what a VPN is, it actually means virtual privacy network and private internet access the company who offers this vpn is one of the best names in the business with over 30 million downloads they are the trusted name in vpns as a youtube creator parts of my life are very public but while on the internet i don't want to expose my digital footprint without the proper protection people on public wi-fi networks hackers and anyone with a bit of know-how can intercept and see my data. But it only takes one click to hide your IP address and encrypt your data, and they keep absolutely no logs, so you'll always be safe. Private Internet Access has over 2,600 VPN servers in over 47 countries, and they can even bypass geo restrictions so you can stream content from platforms like Netflix, Disney, or BBC. Private Internet Access also has dedicated apps for operating systems like Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and others. Plus, they allow you to use up to 10 devices at the same time with just one subscription. If you guys are interested in checking out the video sponsor Private Internet Access VPN, click the link right in the top of the description. You'll get a 77% off discount right off the top, plus you get three months free. That breaks down to less than $3 a month for complete digital privacy. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so that way there's really no risk if you don't like it or if you feel like you don't need it. Just 
get your money back, cancel your subscription, you're good to go. But big shout out to them for sponsoring today's video. I've used them a lot. I would encourage you guys to do the same. A lot of bad people out there on the internet these days can't be too safe with your information. Anyways, folks, I'm going to get some stuff loaded up in the old truck ski. I'm going to get some rods rigged up. But like I said, definitely some top water going to be in play. Maybe a jig. There's a lot of wood and stuff out here. But the goal is trophy bass or bust tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning out on the water. Tell y'all one thing, it's a top water looking morning. I don't know if we can get them to do it, but looks like it should work. And boat plugs would probably be good. <laughs> How many times have I almost forgotten them? Also, fun fact, I broke one of my landing gear legs the other day. So that makes launching and landing a lot more interesting. Now we just have to go straight on to Earth. Oh, no wheels to lessen the fall. All right, we in here. Literally a dead, dead bird right there. <laughs> Didn't even notice it when I first pulled up. It is there. Kind of an odd thing to see when you first pull up to the ramp. Okay. Well, I think first things first, we need to cruise this little bank right here, which is basically the dam. We're adjacent to the deep water and we need to buzz bait the living heck out of this area. From there, we'll probably move out to the middle to the sticks Try to buzz bait that area or hit up with a frog or something. And then if nothing, if all else fails and we have to go to something else, we know that they love the jig out here. Find some deep grass lines with a jig and you're gonna get bit. It's that simple. Oh, that was a nice little bite. First real blow up. Oh gosh darn it. Oh, I gotta keep my voice down. It's still pretty early in this little residential neighborhood, but finally had a nice like blow up style bite on the buzz bait. Missed it, of course. And then I proceed to throw a little backlash the very next follow-up cast, so that's good. First real sign of life we've had. I am shocked. We've been all over this pond all over these these little stick fields right here I mean, shallow grass man you just figure there's some top water fish in here there we go whoa dang <laughs> wow I did not mean to yoink that bass that hard, but we yoinked him. My apologies, kind sir. Oh man, I wonder if that was the same one messing with me. He got his airborne wings today, boys. Okay, well fish number one, even though we did not land him, he was pretty small. I don't don't really see, see the need to land small fish like that. If I can yank him out of the dang water and he comes flying almost into my boat, we really don't need to see him. Some encouraging, it's encouraging signs for the future here. There we go. Fish number two on the buzz. Look at this little guy. Looks like a freaking spot. Look at the color patterns on him. It's definitely not a spot, but it looks like one. I don't know. Could be a spotted bass. I don't know. I don't know why there would be spotted bass in this pond, as well as largies. But then again, I'm not a doctor, okay? I don't stock ponds for a living. Gotta weed through those little guys to get to the biggins. Or at least to even have a chance at the biggins. That one was out here. He wasn't even in these sticks. He was kind of off to the side. Now, the good part about this area, it's just a big, shallow grass flat, basically. So anywhere you cast, you've got a pretty decent chance at getting a bite, you know? Jeez. 
Why do I get the gale force winds? Why can't anybody else get the gale force winds? <laughs> Maybe everybody's dealing with this. I don't know. All I know is on the days I don't fish, the weather's beautiful. And when I decide to go, tornadoes, hurricanes, gale force winds. Ooh, another one. Another little bite. bite a -roo. I'm not digging these short strikes though. Trailer hook would probably be beneficial in this situation, but you guys should know my stance on trailer hooks by now. Not a fan. Wow. What just happened? <laughs> Please tell me my GoPro's running. Yes, yes it is. Well, I'm definitely leaving that in the video. And I turned my motor on. Holy crap, I went to like flip the buzz bait out in front of me. And I completely just tossed my rod and reel. This would have been an amazing combo to throw into with my dang Metanium DC and my custom light rod. Be a cool 700 G's just dumped in the lake. Might have to go in for that one. Oh my God, that's a good one. Oh my God, that's a, that's a Mondo. Oh my God, it's huge. It's freaking huge, guys. It is freaking huge. Oh, it's huge. Oh my gosh. This thing is absolutely massive. This thing is massive. It's a trophy. It's a trophy. Oh, please. No jumping. No jumping. No jumping. No jumping. Oh, he's under the boat. Oh my God, it's so strong. This is a, this is a huge fish. This might be like a, I don't know. Oh, please. Oh my God. Oh my god, what a freaking take! Oh my god, I would scream right now, but we're in a residential neighborhood and I can't. Please tell me I have my scale with me, because if I don't, we're going back to the truck. Of course we don't have my scale with me. It's okay. Let's take a look at this monster. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my god, look at that fish, that thing is huge, oh my god, make sure the old GoPro is running, oh yeah, look at that thing guys, oh my god, I don't want to say 10 pounder, because I don't think it is, it's probably like an 8, maybe a 9, alright, let's put this thing, I'm going to put her in our little, nice little homemade live well here, kind of put her back down like that, let her get some water, and we've got to make a little trek back to my truck. Oh my gosh, it's freaking huge. You know what the worst part is? I don't even know if I have a scale in my truck. Like I, I don't even think, I don't even know if I do. Looks like I got crap on my prop, so I'm not going very fast. Well, I've got to check my truck just because this could be, this could be like Big Bertha status here. Don't worry guys, I've got him, I've got her in my net, but facing forward. That way the water that we're going through is going through her gills the proper way. So I'm gonna do my absolute best to maintain the health of this fish because what a freaking monster. Freaking buzz bait guys. Do you guys see why I throw the buzz bait like every single time I go fishing? <laughs> early summertime too, early morning, it is just a big bass killer what it does i don't think it's a 10 or anything but it's every bit of an eight oh look at that look at that absolute tank right there guys now i don't want to be like i don't want to be that guy that tries to make the fish seem bigger than it is but that's like a seven pounder eight pounder all day the mouth on that thing right there what a freaking fish of course we have no scale that's okay though we'll be all right all right girl bloody tail somehow i don't understand <laughs> this is like still pre-spawn up in here or what oh, what a fish 
fish. Look at this fish. Unbelievable. Had to regain her consciousness. There she goes. She's kind of figuring it out. There she goes. She's just easing back off into the depths. I really hope I didn't cause any excess damage to her by coming over here looking for the scale. But, you know, I think she's fine. This bird, however, is not fine. <laughs> I didn't even see this until I launched my boat. It was like, what the heck? Why is there a bird there? You know, I have had a scale with me, like on every single fishing adventure for the last like two months. Well, even three months, like back in the spawning season. And then the one day I need it. I think it's the biggest bass I've caught all year, except for my PB in Mexico. But biggest United States fish, home, home area fish that I've caught all year. And I didn't even have a freaking scale. Unbelievable, but that's okay. We still caught it. We've got documented proof. We've got evidence. Most importantly, we now know that this lake has mondos in it because you know, you're, just, you're just never sure. You know, people can tell you all they want till they're blue in the face. Oh, hey, there's big fish out here. There's big fish out here, blah, blah, blah. And if I had a dollar for every time somebody told me that and then it really didn't pan out, you know, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> But this one panned out, boys. Tell you one thing, this is the first time me working that bank over there next to all the houses, but I'm definitely gonna go right back to where I caught that fish and continue working that bank with the buzz bait because holy moly. Returning to the scene of the crime. <laughs> Pretty sure this is right about where we caught her. Oh boy, gosh, that just exploded right behind me. Lord. Yeah, this was the area for sure. Now the wind is just picking up more and more every second. So this is, this, the, today's mission is just going to be tough from here on out. I can already tell with this wind being the way it is. One thing I can tell you, it's hard to navigate this dang place. As shallow as it gets in certain situations, it gets so shallow. And then all of a sudden it'll get deep on you and there's grass, there's trees, wood everywhere. It's pretty wild. You can see why bass love this place though. <laughs> it's a bass heaven. You know what the problem is with catching a really nice fish right off the bat? Is it kind of takes away <laughs> the excitement and anticipation that you might have for the day, you know? You come out here with the hopes of catching one big fish, or at least I do. You know, maybe some of the really good anglers, they want to go out there and put like a five fish limit together of just donkeys, you know. Well, see me, that's not really my style, you know. I just want to go out and get one big bite, you know. And sometimes I catch the fish, sometimes I don't. But you catch that fish right off the bat, and it kind of takes away the meaning because the anticipation for the rest of the day because you've you've completed your mission and plus this is such a small pond it's like i mean how many big fish are really out here i mean are there even five big fish out here you know to to catch a limit and god knows how long it would take you to catch the five big fish in this lake i don't know i'm definitely not complaining because i am so tickled that we caught that that monster but now it seems like it's kind of cheapened <laughs> the rest of the day fish fish oh i'm not sure what that was fish grass stick literally could have been anything kind of felt like a fish for a second though kind of felt like it was doing the whole uh wobbity wobbity wop wobble wobble that whole thing you know that's a fish that's a fish be decent he's not it's gonna be the smallest fish in the lake. Oh, he's barely hooked too. Woo! He's barely hooked. And he's tiny. Man, these little guys, they will hook you so fast. They won't even think about it. Oh. Well, a little fish on the clutch. 
switched it up, took that little underspin spin thing off because it's just not really my style. I like underspins, but it's just not really my thing. I'd rather throw a lipless crankbait or just a plain swim bait, to be honest with you. This little guy. He seemed to enjoy the clutch. Uh, I told you guys we'd catch some more fish. Just relax. But with this wind the way it is, and since I've got the old clutchy clutch ready to go, I think we're going to catch quite a few more little guys like that. Yep, there's another one. <laughs> As I'm talking about it. But see, the thing is, these are a little bit better than that last one. Just a little bit. See, the thing is about the lipless crank, right? If you can locate the grass. Oh, well, he's tiny and skinny. I hate that I even caught him. Locate the grass and the cover and bring the clutch over it quickly right over the top of it, right? So that's why I've got my rod tip high like this. And I'm just kind of, I'm kind of burning it. Don't really need to burn it with this reel because it's a super high, fast reel. But you find that grass and just bring the clutch over it like that. I mean, the, the bass are gonna be there. They're gonna be in the grass. I mean, there is there is no if, uh, they will be. If there's grass down there on the bottom, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about any grass anytime ever. I'm just talking about, you know, certain water depths, like, you know, seven, eight, nine feet, 10 feet of water with grass on the bottom. I mean, bring this clutch over the top of that grass. And I mean, there's gonna be fish down there. So small pond like this, they've got nowhere to hide. They're gonna be in it and they're gonna eat a tiny little bait fish that's just scurrying by, you know, they're gonna eat it. Oh, right in front of the boat. Right in front of the boat. Right underneath the boat. Wow. What a bite, guy. Isn't it amazing that we could catch a fish as big as that big one was? And there's, and but it's just like a lake filled with little pounders or half pounders. That's just nuts. Oh man. I'm still like on cloud nine after catching that monster. I could catch those those little guys all day, and that's fine because. We've already, we've got our big and we're good. And now we know they're out here too, which is just, man, it just does the heart good knowing that those jokers are out here. Fish, feels better. They, I guess they all, they kind of always feel, always he's hooked on the side of the face. They always feel so good on the crankbait. Man, this is not a big fish at all. Well, quick release, buddy. Sorry, I didn't mean for you to bash your skull on my boat. I was gonna get you unhooked. <laughs> He's a little impatient. He was kind of just ready to go right now. God, that one felt so good. Like, what would a big fish feel like on this setup? If these fish are feeling good when I first hook into them, holy moly. Imagine catching that first fish or that big fish on this setup. Probably would just tow me around the lake. Oh, that was crazy. I paused it right in front of the boat. <laughs> and this little joker attacked it. Oh, he's freaking hooked crazy. Come on now, dude. Let's not do anything we're gonna regret here, okay? Get out of here, dude. God, he's feisty. That was crazy, I was retrieving it. And I went to turn my motor on, so then you know the bait just kind of paused and fell, and it got annihilated. It's like I have found the tiny bass highway out here, kind of right in the middle, down this little deep trench. It's just small bass after small bass. Where are like the three pounders at? You know, you gotta wonder. You got one pounder galore, and then you got sixes and sevens. There's another one, probably tiny. Yep, it was tiny. Oh, what a jerk. He threw my lipless crank into my net. Never gonna get that out. What a jerk. <laughs> I'm kidding, you guys. I actually like it when the bass show some some spunk, some attitude. Man, we are on them, though. All right, boys, so let's talk buzz baits really quickly and just kind of, I'm gonna go through everything really quick, as quickly as I can, but still give a little bit of detail. So this particular buzz bait that we use today, 
This is the 3 8 ounce Guggen Squad Ketchco Hummer. Okay, that's what this one, this particular one is. Now, of course, there's a million variations and there's a million different kinds of buzz baits out there. So I'm not here to try to sell you a buzz bait. That's just what I'm using and that's what I prefer to use. Half ounce buzz bait would work just as well. This is a 3 8 ounce, so a little bit smaller that I like to use in a pond rather than a lake. In a lake, you've got larger bait fish, and therefore you can have a larger lure. And upon the bait fish are typically a little bit smaller, so you downsize. It's simple as that. With colors, I do not deviate from black and white. Um, I might throw like a natural or a bluegill color if a certain situation applies, but for my money, white and black. Those are the only colors that I, that I pretty much ever throw. As far as trailers, I really like a paddle tail swim bait, which is what this is right here. This is a Guggen Squad Saucy Swimmer, obviously white in color to match the buzz bait, but you could you could have an offset. You could have like a, a darker colored trailer and a lighter colored buzz bait or vice versa. Just whatever. Whatever you think the bass are going to eat the best and whatever they show you that they're, they're going to eat the best, that's what you should go with. I fished this on braided line. That's a very important very important part of this setup probably more important than the reel and the rod is the line braided line especially if you're gonna be fishing it around grass and heavy cover which a buzz bait is typically gonna be fished around stuff like that you've got to horse those fish out of that that slop plus when you get a giant hooked up like that you want to have some very strong lines gonna allow you to secure that fish catch as far as a reel anything high speed and that's just because you're going to be reeling it a lot so it just it makes it a little bit easier on you if you have a higher gear ratio reel i think this one's like an eight one or eight three to one or eight five to one something it's over eight which is really fast so that helps me keep the buzz band on top of the water without having to go like this all freaking day it gets a little tiring rod it's just a standard seven foot three medium heavy rod lighter buzz bait you could probably even throw a medium but me medium heavy i may even go up to a heavy if i'm using that half ounce buzz bait so like i said there's a lot of little tweaks in here but that's my buzz bait setup and that was obviously what caught the big fish today so yeah this pond officially has big bass in it man that is a good feeling it's good it's a good thing when you get to find that out for the first time in a new place you know it's only the second time i've been out here but now we know for a fact that the stories are true that those those kids were telling us and the guy that owns it was telling me you know off camera last time that there were some big bass been caught out of here that's probably one of the biggest ones that's been caught out here. Get in the comment section right now, guys. Let me know your honest opinion. How big was that bass? Didn't have a scale. Didn't try to measure it or anything. I don't even think I have a way to measure it, but it looked like at least a six or a seven to me. Um, I'm trying to be conservative with that guess because the tendency is for us fishermen to be like, oh my God, it's a 10 pounder. That wasn't a 10 pounder. It was a really long fish, not very fat. A uh, big head on it, big mouth, real sturdy shoulders. So I'm saying it was a seven, you know, and, and some change, maybe a seven and a half or something like that. Don't think it was quite an eight. Um, so get in that comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Also smash the thumbs up button if you like these straight up fishing videos with no no gimmick, no challenge, no, nothing like that. And I will make sure I come back to this pond real soon and try to fish it some more, maybe from the bank. Maybe we can walk around it some and kind of pick it apart from the bank. I don't know, I'm up for anything these days. <laughs> the micro boat, the SS Minnow Johnson is still holding on. As you guys know, I did some repairs to it a couple, like a week or two ago. It's still running, it's still it's still plugging away, but it's, it's gonna be something that I'm gonna have to fix hardcore here real soon. But we might be having a real bass boat coming shh really soon so we may not even be using the ss minnow johnson that much but in all actuality we're going to use it plenty in the future too so i shouldn't have even said that we're going to use this just as much as we're going to use any other vessel because i love it so much anyways folks i am getting out of here on to the next outdoor adventure thank you so much for watching fist bump i'm out